Trio sent me this 8000 BTU inverter based window air conditioning unit and it's supposed to be quite efficient and they have enough confidence in it to let me mess with it. So I'm going to test how much cooling this thing does and how much power it uses. So I've got a whole lot of temperature sensors in here to measure the temperature of the room as well as the air in and out of the unit plus some sensors on the back of it. And the temperature right now in here is steady at 22 degrees or 72 Fahrenheit. So what I want to do is turn this thing on full and maintain temperature with this space heater and this space heater and how much power that uses will tell me how much cooling this delivers. So I'll set it to as cool as it'll go. The fan is already set to high. Okay, there it goes. I'll also turn on this fan to make sure the heat is distributed evenly or cooling. And I'll turn this thing on. And then this thing is hooked up to a smart plug. So as soon as the temperature drops below 22 or 72 Fahrenheit, that'll come on to maintain temperature. And now I'm going to leave the room to not mess up the experiment. And the outside temperature is at 26 Celsius or 79 Fahrenheit. And coming out of here right now is 40 degrees or 104 Fahrenheit. And I made a whole video actually about how I fit this in here on my other channel. I'm actually kind of impressed that it's not too loud. So this is on the outside, which is the louder side. On the inside, it's much quieter. This has been running for an hour now. And during that time, this heater only came on a few times briefly, which is to say that uh, this heater at 1440 watts put out nearly as much heat as the AC would remove. I'm gonna turn off the heater and the AC, just to make sure it'll uh, still be at the same temperature and that this is the equilibrium temperature. The orange line is temperature coming out the back of the AC getting over 45 degrees. Green lines is temperature going into the AC. That's hovering around 26, 27 degrees, fairly steady. This cluster of lines here together are the inside temperature, so that's quite steady over the course of the experiment. The blue line is the temperature coming out of the AC going down as low as about seven degrees. And then this light blue line with the spikes on it is the heater power, which is kind of hard to get a sense. So I averaged that over a 10 minute period and that's the uh, cyan line here. And then finally, the red line is the power consumption used by the AC. So somehow, just before 12 o'clock here, things change a bit. The uh, power consumption actually went down a little bit. So did the heat coming out the back of the unit. Yet at the same time, I needed more heat to maintain temperature. So somehow it took the unit a while to come into its own, but it is a brand new unit. Um, so averaging over this period here from 1208 to 1229, the heater that I had constantly on was 1440 watts. Uh, the heater that came on and off averaged 206 watts, plus 35 watts from the fan, 50 watts for the lights, so 1731 watts of heat going into the room. Works out to 5905 BTU per hour. The AC for that time used 555 watts, so I had 3.12 watts out for every watt that the AC used, or dividing BTU by AC power, I had 10.6, which is what the sear factor is in. So the numbers I'm getting fall a little bit short of the specs, but let's test some more. I figured I should also test it for when it's quite hot outside. So I built this fort around the AC unit, which means the air inside that will get fairly warm as it runs. So the temperature the AC sees will be quite a bit higher than our outside temperature right now. So I have to be careful that the tarp isn't touching any part of the AC, so at least the AC itself has free airflow. But I've put this baffle here just to obstruct the airflow a bit so it'll recirculate quite a bit and I imagine it'll get quite warm in there. And once again, maximum cooling on the AC. And this time, I'm going to set the heater on uh, just one of the heat settings so that I don't get as much heat because this thing will more than make up for it if it needs to. Now I'm carefully watching uh, these two numbers which are the temperature at the AC input. I'm aiming for about 40 degrees going into it. Right now it's about 29.33. That's averaging about 88 Fahrenheit. It feels uh, pretty toasty in here, but the temperature reading I'm getting at the input is only about 32 and a bit or 91 Fahrenheit. So I still haven't hit 40 degrees or 104 Fahrenheit at the inputs yet. So I close this off a bit. Let's see if we get hotter. 
watching the numbers, the cooling performance seems to be not diminished, although it's using quite a bit more electricity now. I tried closing the tent even more. Here's the graph while I had that tent around the AC unit. So the outside temperature going into the AC averaged to about 35 degrees, one higher, one lower. That's about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Coming out of the AC, it got as high as about 47 Celsius or 117 Fahrenheit. But the cooling performance of the AC unit actually was not diminished. The air coming out of it was as cold as it was before and I actually needed a bit more power to maintain temperature in the room, so it was actually cooling more now. But it was also using a bit more power than before. So for this time period, I had an average of 1835 watts going in, or 6262 BTU per hour, so getting closer to the spec, the power draw by the AC went up quite a bit to 705 watts, so I was only getting about 2.6 times as much heat pumped out as I was using power or BTU divided by watts is 8.9, so down a little bit because I've got higher outside temperature. But looking at my AC power consumption, that's this red line here, it's clearly higher here than it is down here, so somehow that compressor was at a higher level of working during this period than it was here, so here it was not working as hard as it could all the time. So that air conditioning compressor could have been working harder than it was most of the time, but why wasn't it? And I realized it's quite simple. The air coming out of the AC sometimes got as low as 6 degrees, but of course the heat exchanger that is the evaporator has to get a fair bit colder than the air to cool it to that. So probably that was getting very close to freezing water onto it, so it couldn't get any colder, and the fan blowing air across it was already at its maximum level. So basically, with 22 degrees Celsius or 72 Fahrenheit in the room, cooling it down to 6 or 7 degrees, it just couldn't apply any more BTU, so to say, to that air. So if my room had been, say, at 30 degrees or, say, 95 Fahrenheit, then it could have cooled that air down to 6 degrees and essentially applied a lot more cooling to the air because it started a lot hotter. So basically, you're only going to get those 8,000 BTU out of that air conditioning unit if the room air is hot enough. I'll just assume that if my room was hot enough, I'd get my 8,000 BTU. Well, that little fort around the AC made it hotter around the AC, but it didn't seem to diminish its cooling capacity at all, so I'm just taking it down now. And now for another test, I'll turn off the heaters. And I'll set this to 20 degrees, which is 68 Fahrenheit, and let it regulate to that temperature. After my test with the heater, with the heater off and the setting to 68 Fahrenheit, it gradually reduced its power in steps, and the uh, heat coming out the back also went down in steps, and the cool air kind of got warmer in steps, so it's definitely stepping the power up and down in discrete steps. Then here, for the heck of it, I turned on a 450 watt heater, and the temperature started to rise, although very slowly, and the AC unit during this whole time was consuming just 150 watts. Then I opened the door to the room, which raised the temperature a bit, and I cranked the unit up a bit, um, then turn it off, then on again, and this is where I'm trying to cool down the house. So it's working hard, the outside temperature is starting to drop, and so is the temperature in the house. And once I started running it with the door open and the fan, because I wanted to cool down the kitchen, I saw a noticeable decrease in humidity in the whole house. And I'm hearing this funny sound coming out of it. And I realized what that is, is the condensate from the evaporator in there is flowing into this part here and the fan that blows air out the back is actually picking some of that up and throwing it around and onto this part here, the condenser. And that's actually a really clever design feature because instead of having the condensate just dripping out here, because I don't really want it keeping the deck wet, it throws it onto here which helps to cool this which makes the machine more efficient. And because this part is pretty warm, it just evaporates off of that so I don't get the condensate all over the place, so very clever design feature. But then I realized it's not actually that novel. This old broken window air conditioning unit does the same thing. And you can see the water getting splashed all around here. Well, this thing in here is definitely kind of wet and the humidity in this room has gone up a bit, so it is doing that. And this old broken unit is also 8000 BTU 
It's uh, maybe this much narrower, but uh, quite a lot louder, even if I put it on the lower fan speeds. And I was just thinking, with all the testing I was doing with this thing in here with the space heaters, if I didn't have this AC running at the same time, it would have gotten miserably hot in here. And at 8,000 BTU, well, the smallest mini splits are actually 9,000 BTU. And one thing that has in common with mini splits is it's very quiet, which to me is the best feature. And if you'd like to buy this unit, there's a promotion running right now. You can buy it off of Amazon or Geo's website. See the links in the description.